Good morning, and welcome to Morning Coffee in Kyoto. Today hosted by my Nick mug. Um, I wanted to talk about um, where to get your letters from when you get letters of reference from the JET program. I've seen this conversation come up from time to time. Who are the best people to get letters from? Um, get letters from people who will say good things about you. <laughs> I mean, that's critically the most important thing. So as long as your references are people that are, well, first, real, just in case they do look for them. Of course, you have to have real people as your references. Um, but today, everybody's Googleable. So if they were to Google the person and, and find them, it's probably very important. Um, next thing, your references should be people who knew you as a superior. Um, I've had to write a couple of references for people where I was their co-worker. And while that is okay, um, a letter from someone who is your supervisor is a much more powerful and meaningful thing. There is a different power dynamic between people who are your coworkers and people who are your supervisors. And the power dynamic is such that a person who is your coworker, even if they write about you objectively, when someone's reading that letter, they probably can't think that it is an objective view because your coworkers, you're at the friend level, you're at the not one person is above the other person level. Whereas when you get a letter from a supervisor, it means that this person views you with a position of authority and a position of power at a level that is not the same as you. And therefore they can comment on you as a subordinate, as a worker, as a person that they supervise. And that is what they're looking for because they want to know what information to give your supervisors in the future should you become a JET program participant. Um, when I did the JET program um, the first time, I had my advisor from my master's program write one letter. And the other letter, I had the advisor that I had had when I was living here in Japan. So I came to Japan for part of my grad school and I did an elementary education internship. And I had the supervisor for that internship write me a letter. And so her letter was actually in Japanese. And so I turned in a letter in Japanese from her and I turned in a um, an English letter from my advisor from my master's program. No one asked me, but I did not get a letter from the job that I currently had. I currently was employed as a teacher and I was teaching science in Florida and I did not get a letter from any administrator that was there. They did not ask me about it, but if I was interviewing someone and I did not get a letter from my current position, um, I probably would have asked why. They did not ask me why, but I probably would have said, hey, I noticed you didn't get a letter from anyone at your current job. Is there a reason? Um, obviously, or maybe not obviously, the reason I didn't get a letter was because I didn't want my current school to know that I was trying to get another job because I didn't want them to think I was trying to leave um, because it was kind of awkward. It, I, I just, I wasn't mature enough in my emotions to feel confident to tell my current boss that, hey, I was looking for employment elsewhere. Um, I did not get there until I, shoot, <sighs> I think until about seven or eight years had passed. I guess eight years had passed. 
and I was working at a completely different school in a completely different time and I went to go interview for another job and that interview the interviewer said have you told your current principal that you are looking for another job and I said no I have not and they said why not and I said I didn't want them to think I wanted to leave and they said but you do want to leave and if you're gonna be you know good about this if you're gonna do this the right way you should tell your current boss and I said okay so I went that afternoon and I drove back over to the other school and I walked in and I told that principal to her face which was really hard and I was really nervous I said I'm you know I want to move into a different position I don't want to be doing this anymore I want to be doing this and that was hard so um when I wrote when I got those when I got those two letters for the first time I was on jet I did not get one from my current employer and then I had gone through that secondary experience and so when I came on jet the second time um, one of my current letters was from my current employer. I basically went to my past two employers and I went to um, one of my assistant principals at the previous school who I knew would write me a good letter and one of the assistant principals at the current school and they both wrote me obviously fairly decent letters or I couldn't have gotten here. But it's hard sometimes I know trying to ask people for letters. But the JET program is something different. The JET program may be one of your dreams. And also, you have to think about the fact that, you know, it's not a normal application process. In a normal application process, you might apply for a job and then move to a different job in the same city or maybe in the same state. However, when you apply and then go on JET, you're going to a completely different country in a completely different place. So, if you tell your current employer, look, I have no idea if I'm going to get this thing. I, I would love to stay working here. However, I feel like in my life I have to take this chance. Um, so I hope you'll support me. And then kind of get a read on them um, as you ask for their letter. Because you want to make sure that this letter is a good letter. Um, I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of people getting sunk because their closed reference letters sunk them. In fact, I have my very, very own story because in my family, um, once someone was applying for a university and um, for a master's course, actually, and was submitting letters to two different schools and they asked two different um, current undergraduate supervisors to write letters for them. And the first person agreed very quickly and said, sure. And the second person agreed tentatively, but said um, to give them some time because I really had to think about it. Now, if someone said that to me now, me knowing this story, I might say, ooh, red flag, and then go try and find someone else to get a letter from. Um, but my family member did not. And so... They just kept going forward with this. And they asked the people for letters in, I believe, I don't know, let's say two months prior to the event. And then the first person wrote them letters and they had to be submitted to an online system. And they were submitted within about two weeks of them being asked. But that secondary person, six weeks went by seven weeks went by and it was getting to that eight week deadline and my family member called them and said hi i was just wondering if you're still going to send the letters and they said oh you know i've really been thinking about it and it's going to be kind of hard and so i wish my family member had said oh i, I totally understand um thank you for letting me know and said bye but instead they said oh are you sure i only have one late week left and they said, oh, well, you know, fine, I'll think of something. And what ended up happening was this person decided that my family member was harassing them. And so they submitted two blank letters 
to both of these programs. And so both of the programs saw that a blank letter was submitted and um, did not further talk with my family member. So the reference person sunk them in their interviews, which sucked and that went, made that person's life go in a completely different direction. Um, so you have to think of who this person is and would they be supportive and, you know, do they actually know you? This is why I stress that if you can't think of someone to write you a letter and you've got a couple months before you go, start volunteering somewhere. Um, if you can get one letter from your current employer or a college advisor and you start volunteering somewhere, go volunteer for Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, go volunteer for Boys and Girls Club, go volunteer at the Y, go volunteer somewhere so that there is someone who can say you are good with kids and that you volunteer of your own free will and do some sort of program or course with the kids and then they can write about that and they can write about you. Volunteering costs nothing and it means you get a second letter. So um, just, just volunteer. I mean you can even be honest when you walk in and say you know I can volunteer from now until I leave. So, you know, you'll have one year with me. If, let's say you know you're going to go to the JET program. So the year before in, you know, the summer break, July or August, you go in and say, okay, I can start volunteering with your organization. I can volunteer for this year you know, around, you know, November, the application's due. So you can go in October and say, hey, you know, I've worked here for a few months. I was wondering if you could write me this letter and then have them write the letter. I, I don't know about you, but several times when I've written application letters or and I've needed reference letters, the person writing the refer reference actually had me proofread my own letter. Uh, I don't know if that, that happens everywhere, but if someone offers um, thank them profusely, you can help to add some good information in about yourself. And remember, the whole part of the application is to sell yourself, to make it so that you know, they want to get you. But, um, yeah, help that person write that letter. Make sure it looks good. Um, but yes, volunteer. Uh, if you can volunteer, that'll get you a good letter. And people are always looking for volunteers. And I, I've said this before, but like, let's say you volunteer at the YMCA or Boys and Girls Scouts or Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Maybe you've never done that before in your life. Maybe you were never a scout and you show up at a scouting office. It doesn't matter. They're looking for bright young people. They're looking for bright any age people to work as a volunteer because people just don't volunteer. So if you do volunteer, that makes you a unique, special, amazing person. So go volunteer. Um, you'll meet somebody, hopefully, that can write you a letter. But yeah, get, get people who are going to say good things about you and try not to get letters from coworkers. It just doesn't look like the right dynamic. Um, and yeah, good luck. So um, letters are a really important thing. Letters can help people to understand why they should recruit you and why you are so cool. And um, yeah, make you part of their program. I've had my coffee and so it is time for me to go. Everybody have a good day. Um, enjoy your coffee. Get some good letters. Talk to you later. Man. <sighs> My brain is not completely awake in the morning. <laughs> I should probably make these videos. Welcome to morning after coffee in Kyoto so I can at least think... <laughs>